In the northern hemisphere of Mars, the Marth Phallus area is important because of the diversity of the mineral signatures that you see. The great channel that cuts across this was carved by water, but even the highlands here were affected by water. In the craters that are there, we see different mineral signatures in the different layers, indicating the episodic activity of water at the planet or the mixing of soils by impacts in the early history of Mars. In the southern hemisphere of Mars, Holden Crater, 60 miles across, is very interesting because there is a channel that goes into the crater, and here you're looking at the front of that, the delta, indicating that water once flowed into the crater, ponding as an inland sea or lake, and then breached the far wall and ran out, leaving layers. In those layers, we expect to find evidence of the past chemistry, the action of water, how long it was there, but it may also have the potential to have preserved biosignatures, that is, evidence of past life, if life had ever developed on the planet and flourished in this area. The outstanding characteristic of Eberswall Crater, the thing that calls out to land in this area, is that it has a delta formation like that of the Mississippi River, in which it's obvious that material has flowed in a channel out of the highlands down into this crater and formed a delta formation, highly structured and layered, meaning that there were many episodes of water flowing into the crater. Those layers could be preserving not only the history of this area as it formed over time in Mars and the activity of water on its surface, but it's the kind of formation that could also preserve evidence of past life if that life had developed on the planet. Gale Crater in the southern hemisphere of Mars near the equator is an attractive landing site because it's a very deep crater, more than three miles deep, and yet at one time it must have been completely filled because its central mound actually extends above the crater rim today. Evident in here are many different kinds of minerals, sulfates, sediments, clay materials that indicated the action of water, and because of that action of water, the possibility that it may have preserved evidence of past life. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has seen many places on the planet. One of the most interesting is one of the great canyon systems on Mars. This is a branch of that canyon system called Candor Chasma. You can see the tortured ground that is there, the layers, the many buttes and mesas that poke up above this. The scale of these things is such that we're looking across a couple of miles of territory. There is no vertical exaggeration in the stereo image made by taking images at separate times on separate orbits. Some of these buttes extend up a football field in size. Fault systems that were produced by earthquakes, in this case Mars quakes, give us clues as to whether this is material that was eroded away or actually whether it was deposited and then eroded later. The stress patterns show us the canyon formed first, was filled with material, and eroded away leaving these buttes, with the buttes being formed by more resistant rock at the top of the buttes, darker in these images. One of the questions we have about Mars is where we see the effects of water on its surface. How did that water get there? It may have been different in different places. Did it erupt from underground as springs, for instance? Or did it fall from the sky in rainfall? And it may have been associated with events like impact craters. One of those impact craters is Mojave Crater. And here we're going to look at a perspective view that was formed from two images forming a stereo pair. As you can see, water ponded on the terraces, and then it overflowed and ran down to the next terrace. If you look at the rim of the crater, you see channels that run right up to the top. So these aren't springs. This must have been rainfall that carved this part of the planet. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is able to look at not only the structure of the surface, its topography and shape, but also its composition. We're going to zoom in to an area called Nili Fossi that is very diverse. And that's shown here in false color. What we're looking at are the mineral signatures, fingerprints that appear in reflected sunlight 
although it's at wavelengths that our eyes are not sensitive to. Straight edges are the edges of the images that were taken. We don't have complete coverage. What we're most interested in here are the areas that are colored green. Those are areas in which carbonates are present. Carbonates indicate that here's an environment that could have been conducive to life, and if not life today, it could have preserved the signature of life that may have occurred in the past. That is, the organic molecules should also be preserved today if they were ever produced on its surface. This very diverse area shows a complex mineral signature and also shows that there are many different kinds of water environments on the planet. So water was not uniform in its activity. It may have persisted in some areas longer than in other areas, and its interaction with the rock has left us clues about what that ancient history was. One of the early images taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was a Victoria crater in order to help the Opportunity rover figure out which way to move around the crater as it looked for a way to get down inside. Here you see that image taken from 180 miles above the surface of Mars. We're going to use that image to zoom in and see what it would look like from the rover's point of view if it were on the edge of the crater looking out over it and then match that with an image that was actually taken from the rover Opportunity on the Mars surface.